Now, South Africa hooker Bongi Umbanambi will start Saturday's Rugby World Cup final against New Zealand after World Rugby declared there was insufficient evidence that he'd used a racial slur towards the England back row forward Tom Curry. Let's get more on this. We can cross live to Paris and join our reporter, James Cole. Evening, James. Evening, Mike. Yes, it's a very wet French capital here and it's been a very eventful day at the Rugby World Cup. It began first thing this morning with that news that Bongi and Banambi would be available to play for South Africa, cleared of racially abusing Tom Curry. That dropped just moments before South Africa were to name their team for the World Cup final here on Saturday and the South African hooker was going to be in the team regardless. Then we had the press conference at which South Africa decided they didn't want to talk about the breaking news. Us, we've got a World Cup final coming up this weekend and um, we'd like the, to keep the questions to that. SA Rugby is working on a statement that they will send out later today, so uh, we'd like the focus uh, to be on, on the Rugby World Cup final today. Thank you. Are you f relieved that you can actually concentrate on a game of rugby and not on a circus? Um, look, I must say, we, we're fortunate in, in terms of the, the, the support and the, 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 the legal team and everybody that work behind the scenes. I mean, we were very shielded from it, to be honest. Uh, and where we stay on the Gulf Estate over here, we, we're almost in our own little bubble. So for us, it was business as usual, and we just focused on, on rugby, uh, and, and that was taken care of. World Rugby said there was insufficient evidence to charge Mbanambi. The allegation came around the 24th minute of the semi-final between England and South Africa. You hear Tom Curry uh, speaking to referee Ben O'Keefe saying he'd been racially abused. It, crucially, though, you don't hear on any microphone the actual alleged racial slur. That was the issue. The governing bodies say there was not evidence available. They'd studied the video and the audio and that they could not, therefore, charge the South African hooker. The statement from World Rugby was immediately then followed by a statement from the RFU. They were not happy at all. They responded by saying they are deeply disappointed that the case has been dropped and that evidence wasn't put before an independent disciplinary panel. They say that would have given Curry the opportunity to tell his side of the story and for his evidence to be heard independently. Let's be clear, Tom Curry's done nothing wrong. There's no... Yeah. Let's be clear on that. So we've got a victim of a situation who's not been able to have his voice heard. That, by World Rugby's decision, they've denied the opportunity for the, the victim of the situation, Tom Curry, to have his voice heard. That's where the, the disappointment really comes. Tom Curry and his family being subjected to online abuse. I just wonder what you make of that, how that makes you feel. If it's a player, if it's a coach, if it's a referee, um, I obviously don't support that and I obviously feel for him. And um, I have spoken to him. Um, I've spoken to him, I sent him a message as soon as I saw that's going on because it's somebody that I respect, that I've played with, uh, against uh, for, 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 for quite a while. And I've, I've been through it too. I've been through it too. When we can take it as players, when it comes to us directly, it's fine. But when it comes to your family, it's totally different. And that's exactly what he said uh, uh, to, uh, to me, that it's, um, it's really hard when it, people, when, they, when the family is involved, so, yeah, I, it's, it's the one part of the game that we really don't enjoy. And I hope, you know, obviously it stops. Aside from Mbanambi, South Africa have made five changes for this final, including both halfbacks. Faf de Klerk and Andre Pollard come in. They've also picked seven forwards on their bench and just one back. It's a bold move. It's risky. And it also means that the fly half, who was their first choice at the start of the tournament, Manny Leboc, misses out completely on a World for a guy like Mani, he really wants to play. He was disappointed, but he became Richie Mohanga for the team and gave us the best pictures we could get because he knows at the end of the day that if he gives the best, and that's the role that he's asked to play for this specific game, as Andre had to do, as uh, Marvin Ori, who's been amazing for us, everybody has a role to play, and that's just the role that he's chosen to play. And we'll give it everything, and we're not going to die wondering. It's a World Cup final. And when if we do and become successful after the game, he will know that all the input that is put in, whether it was on or not or off the field, it made a difference to make us be successful as we can. 
As for New Zealand, they've just named their team here a short while ago at this hotel, the team hotel. Just one change for them. Brody Retallick comes in at lock for Whitelock, a very, very settled New Zealand team, a very confident New Zealand team. This, remember, the biggest rivalry in rugby and both teams going for a place in history by becoming the only team to win the World Cup four times.